Drums can be one of the hardest instruments to get sounding right and sitting right in your mix. So in this video, I'm going to give you my mixing tips for drums here in GarageBand iOS. Let's go. Hi, my name is Pete and this is Studio Live Today where I help you create, record and release your best music. Now, if you're not a drummer like me, then you're probably using Smart Drums or the Drummer app or some other sort of drum to bring in those drum sounds into your projects in GarageBand. Now, they sound pretty good, but getting them sounding just right and working well with your other instruments can be a challenge. So in this video, I'm just going to show you some quick tips around your compression, your EQ and your volume and velocity that are going to help get your drums popping and sounding great in your mix. Here we are in GarageBand, iOS on my iPhone, very similar on the iPad, I'll point out any differences as we go along. I have my three track song here, which is my 12 bar blues that I created a couple of videos ago. I will link to that one up above and down below right now if you wanna check it out. But right now it sounds a little bit like this. So a very simple arrangement, but I've got, you know, I've just done some tweaking with the balancing there. I haven't done a whole lot more to this track because I'm going to come in and show you how we can alter these drums, whether we want them to sit back or pop out, whether we want to have lots of compression, really hard on the snare, hard on the bass. There's a bunch of things we can do. So this isn't going to be comprehensive, but this is going to be some ideas that you can take away and then try yourself. So I've used drummer here, but if you've used smart drums or using drum loops or you're recording real live drums, most of the principles are going to to be the same, except this one, which I'll dive into now. So let's come into the actual drummer by tapping on the drummer there. So here's Mason, he's doing his thing here. I've got the Niels Barn preset, but I've brought it up onto the cymbals here and I've done a few other little tweaks here. But the thing I want you to look at here is the matrix over here on the left. So you've got your simple and complex going left to right, and then you've got your loud to soft. Now the loud to soft is what really defines the sound because this is how hard the drummer is gonna be hitting the drums and the cymbals. And if you're finding that you're getting drums that sound hard and over compressed, chances are that you've got the loudness up here too much. Let's show you what I mean by putting the loudness right up and playing back. Can you hear how that snare in particular is really, is really doing that really hard snare hit? Whereas if you compare that to if I bring it down to about the halfway mark, Hear how there's not that intensity in the drum, so this track needs that sort of little bit more laid back. If it was a big rock track, maybe we'd put it up there, or maybe not all the way up, but sort of around there. And if we bring it all the way down to soft, let's now take a listen to what that sounds like. So you can see here that just varying it between loud and soft or somewhere in between is going to get you a different sound. And a lot of people misinterpret this as, oh, I just want the drums to be louder. I'll put it to loud here. Don't do that here. Do that in your volume, your EQ, your compression, which we're going to show you next. This is how the drum sound is going to be. So pretend you're telling the drummer how hard to hit the drums. That's what this dial is going to do. So let's bring it back to the level that we wanted, which is around about here. Yeah, so we've got some cool drums going on. We can still hear that snare, it's still cutting through, but it's not overpowering. So that's gonna be good for now. Let's go back to our track. So that's our one drummer specific tip. The rest of the tips are going to be irregardless or regardless of the type of drums that you're using, you can use these same tips. So the first one, of course, is our volume. So you'd wanna get your static mix around about right before you start playing with compression, EQ, and other things. So let's just play this back and I'll move these drums around just to see if we've got them sitting nicely in the mix. Yep, they're looking around about right. I will show you one more thing with drummer before we move on because this one is important. If we do go up to loud here again, and then we've got our drums cranked up like this, just check your metering and watch what happens here. Can you see how we're hitting into the red and we're getting those little red spots that stay there? Anytime you get those red spots that stay there, it means you're peaking or clipping on the track. 
Peaking or clipping is something you don't want to do, even though this is a digital instrument. So technically it can be okay because you can dial it back and do some other things, but get into the habit of not having your drums or any of your tracks clipping up, even getting close to that orange red zone there because it's going to give you a bad sound. It's going to give that really over compressed, over intense sound that we don't really want to go for unless that's what you want to go for. More power to you if that's what you're looking for, but let's bring it on back to here. We'll drop the volume back again of our track here and make sure we're sitting pretty. Yeah, so that's pretty cool. Now I'm going to dive in to, so we've got our volume, we've looked at the drummer settings. Now let's look into that mysterious world of EQ and compression and take a look at what we can do to really shape the sound of these drums. All right, let's jump into the fun stuff, compression and EQ. So to access that, we tap on the mixer button in the top left here, we tap on plugins and EQ, and by default, we'll have a compressor, the effect EQ, and a visual EQ applied here. Let's turn all of those off to start with, and then I'll show you how we can use our compressor and our EQ to shape our drum sound. So let's take a listen to the drum sound as it is now without any processing. So not bad, uh, it's gonna sit okay in the mix like that, but what if we want to really boost that and really enhance that sound? Well, we can use our compressor. Let's turn on the compressor by pressing the blue button and take a look at the settings. Now I have a complete video all about the compressor, which you can check out above and below if you wanna get more detail, but I'll just go through quickly what a compressor does. So the first dial here, the threshold, is going to tell the compressor at what volume it should come on. So the lower it is down here, the lower the volume is that the compression starts and therefore the more compression compression we actually perceive. The ratio is going to be how much compression is applied once the compressor is turned on. So the higher, the more uh, compression we get. And then attack is how quickly the compressor actually kicks in. So if we want it to kick in straight away, as soon as it hits that threshold, we have it way down. If we want a little bit of a delay, a little bit of a leeway there, so it's not going to compress as aggressively, we have the attack up a little bit. Gain is just the volume that the compressor will have and mix is how much of that compression is mixed in. Okay, there's your crash course. Now let's play with each of these and I'll show you the difference that we can make to our sound using these effects. We'll hit play and then I'll dial firstly the threshold back and you'll hear the difference in the song. So you can hear that as we dial back the threshold, we get more compression. But did you notice what happened when we dialed it all the way back here where it's compressing even at those really low volumes? You get what we call pumping or like over limiting or like the over compressing. So that means that you get this sort of sound here. You can hear on some of those hits that it's sort of going, ooh, ooh, ooh. You can, it's over compressing. So we want to be really careful of that because that can really damage a mix if your drums are over compressed because you get that distracting pumping going on. So you want to compress, even if you want to compress aggressively, you want to push, you can push it all the way to the limit, but just be really careful that you don't overdo it. And especially if you then put your ratio up and your attack to be really quick, let's take a listen to what uh, mess we can make here. So we're getting clipping, we're getting distorting, we're getting over compressing, we're getting pumping, really not good. So the moral of the story here is with your compressor, make sure that you start sort of with maybe a little bit of a slower attack and the ratio a little bit lower, get your threshold right to where it's actually kicking in the right amount and then adjust your ratio and your attack to, to just get it to hold and have that nice balance. Because the, the point of a compressor is to give you a balanced signal. You want to remove, I guess, some of the variance in. You want it to be nice and have those drums punching through throughout your whole track. So let's just dial in and make sure we have our compressor sitting okay now. Yep, that's sitting about okay. So that is our compressor. You can play with that, use that variety and just play around with the settings because you'll need different compression settings for different drums and, and different instruments as well. So trial and error is your friend. There's no one good setting. A lot of people say, what ratio should I use? What should my threshold be? It depends on the recording. It depends what instrument, what track you're doing and how it's been recorded will depend on how you mix it. So unfortunately there's no answer except to keep trying things until you get it right. Okay, let's look at the EQ now. So the EQ is 
a lot of people think it's very mysterious. They're like, well, what is all this EQ? I don't understand equalization. EQ is very simply a volume control for different frequencies. So if you look at the three band EQ that we have here, you've got your bass, you've got your mids, and you've got your treble. So all this is doing is turning up or turning down the bass sounds, the mid sounds, and the treble sounds. So we'll just double tap on each of these to take them back. Once again, I've got a video about the visual EQ if you wanna learn how to use this in more detail. But once again, let's play back the track and I'll show you what we can do. First of all, I'm gonna boost and then cut the bass and you'll hear the difference in the sound. So you can hear there that when it's boosted, we get a lot more of the kick drum, we get that boominess coming through. When it's cut, we lose that bottom end. So depending whether your drums are sounding too boomy, you might even wanna cut them down like this. If you really want that kick drum, that bass drum to be pumping and sounding good, maybe not pumping, not in the compression way, then you can actually uh, boost up your bass. Let's play with the mids now. And you can hear there that you're probably not gonna be boosting anything in your mids, because your mids is where things like your vocals and your guitars and other things sit. You don't wanna have your drums all the way up here, otherwise they're gonna be drowning out your, your mid-range instruments and they sound pretty terrible anyway. But you may wanna find a frequency to cut your drums to actually make room for some of your other instruments. So think about EQ as a way to make room and that cutting can often be better than boosting because if you've got other instruments in that EQ range, maybe they should be boosted and maybe your drums should be cut. Play around with it, you'll find the balance there. Finally, let's take a look at the treble. And again, the same thing applies here. So if we want a little bit more of that air or that presence boost, a lot of people call it, then we can up the treble. Don't go nuts with it, but maybe just a few dB up here might just make your drums pop and cut through at that top end, especially if you've got some cymbals like we have in this drum mix, then you might wanna uh, increase the treble a little bit. If you're finding that you've got you know, a whole heap of crashes and they're really distracting, maybe dial it down a bit. Maybe just dial down a tiny bit of this, these airy high-end frequencies and you might find that your drums sit better in the mix. So there you go, that is your compressor and your EQ. Now we could go into a whole bunch more detail. There's a lot of other plugins that you can try and that you can use. I've got videos all about those. You can come in here, you can add all of these different effects. You can use a bunch of audio unit extensions as well to actually shape your drum sound. But uh, let's, let's walk before we run. And I thought that this would just be a good uh, entry level crash course to how we can get a better drum sound and a better mix of our drums here in GarageBand. There you go, just a few tips that are gonna get you started, just some ideas that will get you, because every song is gonna be different, every mix is gonna be different, but hopefully this gives you some ideas to work with, because it's all about trial and error, trying these different options, finding what works for your sound and your mix. If you've got any comments, questions, or suggestions about this, or anything else related to music recording, you can leave that down in the comments below, and I'll see you on the next video. Hey, thanks for sticking around. Want more tips about drums here in GarageBand? We've got two more videos linked up down below. You can also subscribe to the channel by clicking on the Studio Live Today icon in the top right corner or head on over to studiolivetoday.com for more audio goodness.